The Derby Hall Bandstand is a replica of one which stood on this site and was used by President Theodore Roosevelt and others to give public speeches. The original bandstand was taken down in the 1930s, and in 1981, this one took its place. Originally, it was to be dedicated solely to the memory of Theodore Roosevelt's daughter, Ethel Roosevelt Derby. Her godson, Leonard Wood Hall, was the principal organizer of the efforts to build the bandstand in her name. Hall was a New York congressman who also served as chairman of the Republican National Committee during the 1950s. When he died before it was completed, it was dedicated to both of them. The view from the gazebo shows two buildings which are almost mirror images, Town Hall and the Post Office. Old-timers may remember when the site of Town Hall East used to be the Lyric Theater, where generations of Oyster Bay residents fell in love with the movies. Around the bandstand are three Civil War-era cannons, two of which are called Parrot Guns, after their inventor, Robert Parker Parrot. A Parrot Gun's most recognizable feature is the thick band of iron wrapped around the breech. This band, at the point of greatest force, enabled the gun to be made of less expensive iron rather than bronze. The parrot gun at the foot of the gazebo stairs is a circa 1861 Civil War trophy gun from the USS R.R. Kyler. The R.R. Kyler was a 1,202-ton wooden steamship chartered by the Union Navy to enforce a blockade of Florida's west coast. This 30-pound parrot gun, which weighs 3,510 pounds, was presented to Oyster Bay by the Navy and unveiled by President Theodore Roosevelt in 1903. The cannon facing Town Hall is a Civil War-era Dahlgren gun, named for its inventor, Rear Admiral John A. Dahlgren. This gun, with its unique soda bottle-shaped barrel, was manufactured in many sizes and became the standard weapon on Union naval vessels after 1856. It has on its base a tablet cast from metal recovered from the wreckage of the USS Maine, which was destroyed in Havana Harbor February 15, 1898. 266 men lost their lives when more than five tons of powder charges exploded, completely destroying the forward third of the ship. Although most historians now agree that the explosion was accidental, tensions in the aftermath of the disaster contributed to America's decision to begin the Spanish-American War of 1898.